1045 The Team. We are now joined by, uh, man, it's been a little while since we had a chance to talk to you from ESPN LA host George Sedano with us. Now, my first question is, why in the world aren't you the new general manager of the New York Knicks? What what went wrong? Yeah, apparently James Dolan's been reading my tweets all these years and uh, isn't interested in hiring me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we want you, George, to be the GM of the Knicks. We've said it before, right here in Albany, New York, you were our guy. With the GM not being you, can this Knicks team at least have some success in this season? No. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, look, this season should all be about Porzingis anyway, right? Like, that's what this is. The, the entire season should be about him developing, him becoming a lead player in this league. And you saw some of that yesterday. He's just going to need real players around him. And, you know, we'll find out if Steve Mills is capable of doing that job. But this is a rebuild that's going to take a while. Look, the positive thing is this. I did tweet this yesterday, is that the Knicks actually have their first-round pick this year. So, you know, at this point, just be bad. Be bad and get Porter or Bagley or Donkage or one of those kind of guys that can change your franchise. Um, that's what you want. So I don't know, like being a lifelong Knicks fan, I, I look at them almost the way the Jets are right now, where they're going to mess around and win 30, 40 games and cost themselves a lottery pick. Yeah, that's the problem. Like you don't want to win 40 games because 40 games, maybe, maybe, even in the East, as bad as it is, maybe we'll still probably get you in the playoffs. Like you want to be 35 wins or under. Like that's the area you want to be in to make sure that you're in the lottery. And to be honest, you probably want to be worse than that. You know, it, it, for me, the future without Carmelo Anthony, I know LeVac and I go back and forth, and it hurts for me as a Syracuse guy that maybe he's in a better spot in Oklahoma City, but I want him to see with the Knicks. Is the Knicks team, at least for the future, much better without Carmelo Anthony? Yes, and I do think that's going to be the case. Look, Carmelo's older. Carmelo is fine as the third option on a team that's a contender. He can't be your lead guy. As long as he was in New York, he was going to try to be the lead guy. And and that just isn't going to work. You can't build your team around that kind of guy. It's a decision Pat Riley made a couple of years ago that people freaked out about when he let Dwayne Wade walk. It's not like they didn't offer him a good deal. Um, he basically left for $6 million more. Um, and, and look, I don't blame Dwayne for being annoyed by it, um, but Pat Riley did what was in the best interest of the organization, which is to move on. George Sedano with us right now with LeVac and Goss on 104.5 The Team. Sedano, uh, Goss hit me with an interesting question yesterday, and I think you're the man to answer it. What will be higher, the number of postseason strikeouts for Aaron Judge or Nick's regular season wins? Oh, how many postseason strikeouts does he have already? 20, 24. 24. Um, and he's potentially got an, you know two more games, another series maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to go worst case scenario. Uh, I would say if the Yan- okay, I'll put a caveat on it. If the Yankees make the World Series, Aaron Judge will have more strikeouts. Okay, all right, I'll take it. That's a fair answer. Let's get to the last night's matchup out on the West Coast. Out, you guys, the LA Lonzo Ball, the Los Angeles Lakers. He makes his NBA debut. Your takeaways from Game One from Lonzo Ball? Uh, Lonzo Ball got punked yesterday, man, um, and it's not his fault. Um, and it, look, it, maybe it has something to do with LeVar. Uh, John Wall talked about this months ago on TM. He, got, he did some Instagram or Snapchat or something where he said that guys are going to come at him. Um, and that's just what's going to happen because of all the hype, because of his dad, all that stuff. And there's not much he can do about it. But man, what an unfair situation for him to come in and be up against the guy who is a premier defender, probably the premier defender at the point guard position a first-team type defense type guy in Patrick Beverly who's got the dog in him. You know what I mean? Like, he, he hounds anybody. Uh, you know, he gives uh, Russell Westbrook a run for his money at times. And, look, you're never going to stop Russell Westbrook, but you're going to limit him as best you can, make him take as many shots. And, and we've seen Pat do that to some of the greats. So you knew he was going to get up in Lonzo, and Lonzo's kind of frail. Uh, you know, his body's not there. He's only 19 years old. And he looked a little rattled last night, and it was all Patrick Beverly. He duped the whole thing. George Sedano with us right now from ESPN LA. Is, is this going to be everybody against Lonzo? Like, is everybody going to kick it into that next gear because of his father? Uh, yeah, I think that that's part of it. I also think point guard is one of the deepest positions in the entire league right now, guys. Like, look about it. Look at it. I mean, it's one of those positions where almost night in and night out you're going to face an all-star caliber type of player 
even guys like a Goran Dragic or a Kemba Walker, uh, you know, have been, in, in Goran's case, he's been third-team All-NBA once in his career. You know what I mean? Like, Kemba is a borderline all-star type player. Like, those are the lower-end guys most nights. Uh, there are only a handful of teams, maybe six or seven tops, where you don't have a premier player. And if they don't have a premier player, you have a guy like Pat Beverly, right, who's going to haunt you all night long on the defensive end and hound you. So, yeah, it's just not an easy position to play. Like, Lonzo's going to have a learning curve. And there's going to be nights, though, where he's going to have some good nights. But, yeah, I think this notion that he's going to, you know, rock the NBA world out of the get-go uh, is, uh, you know, a little delusional. I think a good season for Lonzo is averaging somewhere between 12 points, you know, seven, six or seven assists, five boards. If he can do that, that's similar to what Jason Kidd did his rookie year. You should be fine with that. It's going viral now. The interview post game, Neil Everett, Stephen A. Smith with LeVar Ball. Are we going to have the LeVar Ball interviews on any station, whether it be ESPN or others, after every Laker game? Well, we had him on yesterday. We didn't have him on today. Um, but yeah, I mean, it might be for a while, you know? <laughs> I, look, the reality is he's polarizing, and people love him and hate him. And, but at the end of the day, people are watching or listening when he's on. Um, because he's that polarizing. That's what people do. Uh, we've seen people in this industry that we work in in radio do that really well. Howard Stern's made a career out of it. You know what I mean? So uh, he's making, what, $70 million a year or whatever? So, yeah, it's a lucrative business for LeVar to do what LeVar does. Sedano, when you described him, I didn't know if you were going LeVar Ball or Marshawn Lynch. What's, a, what's the feedback over there on the left coast of Lynch leaving the sideline, running in, and being part of that game where you didn't need to be? Uh, yeah, look, I mean, I think that for the most part, people think it was pretty dumb, right? Like, you're getting tossed out of the game. Like, you, you can't have that. You can be running off the sideline. Like, we talked about it briefly this morning uh, on the L.A. morning show um, with Keyshawn and LZ and myself. And, you know, look, Keyshawn was like, look, he's like, look, man, I love Marshawn Lynch. I would love that guy on my team, but <laughs> you can't run off the sideline. It's just <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and there's just no other way to describe it. Like, that's just the reality of it. George Sedano with us on 104 Father Team. Uh, Sedano, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we know you're really busy. We appreciate your time. Uh, anything new in your world that we can look forward to? No, buddy. Uh, you know, I mean, just you know, the regular stuff. Still on Sports Center covering the NBA. If you're a big boxing fan, actually, uh, I'm in Miami right now uh, to do a feature on Guillermo Rigondo, who is the Cuban boxer who's going to be fighting Vasil Lomachenko on ESPN on December 9th at Madison Square Garden. Uh, as you know, ESPN's got a uh, a deal with Bob Arum and Top Rank, where we've had a, a number of really good primetime fights on Saturdays. We had Manny Pacquiao and that crazy loss in the summer uh, out in Australia. Terrence Crawford is one of the best pound-for-pound fighters in the world just a few months ago. Um, and we're going to have this next fight on December 9th. Uh, so I'm doing a feature for ESPN.com on Guillermo Rivendo and his journey from Cuba. Uh, he has one of those wild stories much like Yasiel Puig, uh, about you know getting smuggled out uh, in a uh, speedboat and having to go to Mexico and being in hiding. Uh, he went from being a hero, uh, one of the greatest boxers in Cuban history, to being a traitor because he actually had a failed uh, escape attempt the first time. So you know his family is still in Cuba. He's basically isolated here and trying to compete at the highest levels of boxing. So it's going to be a pretty wild, intense story that we're going to be working on. I'm actually going to visit with him uh, after he's done with his training session at 2 o'clock today. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I got coming up. So just keep an eye out for it. It's a little while away. It, you know, it's going to come out the first week of December. But if you're a big boxing fan, uh, something you'll want to read for sure. Definitely looking forward to that. Also in Miami, I would advise not to watch the Hurricanes because they're going to lose to my beloved Syracuse <laughs> Orange. All right, Miami's on upset no alert. Way. The U's U- U- not back. You guys already you already had your big upset uh, against <laughs> Clemson. That's not happening. That's actually the best thing in the world for Miami that Syracuse beat Clemson because now they'll take them seriously. Um, and clearly, Clemson's got two good wide receivers. The quarterback is really good. Um, but Miami's rolling right now, and they're doing it with injuries. They're not even 100%. They haven't been 100% all season. Um, their best right wide receiver, who's an NFL talent, and Amon Richards, uh, that's a first-round pick type of talent. He hasn't been right all year. He's missed a bunch of games because of a hamstring injury. Their defense has been banged up. They lost their best running back, and they're still going to win that game by double digits. Now I'm going to have to bring tissues in on Monday, Sedano. I'll Thanks. be tweeting, George. Don't you worry. All right? We appreciate your time, George Sedano. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Have a good one. Always good talking to you. You too, man. Thanks so much.